She's a rich and rare land. Oh, she's a fresh and fair land. She's a dear and rare land, this native land of mine. She's not a dull or cold land, no. She's a warm and bold land. Ah, she's a true and old land, this native land of mine. The Republic of Ireland has aptly been called the Emerald Isle. Rich in language and song, its poets give call to its wonders. Women, horses, or even the lushness of its fair pastures. Each give of its best. Characteristic of the people is this. A typical ceiling of a bargain in cattle buying. Over two million pounds sterling are exported annually to food producing countries in Europe, Australasia and the United States of America. Livestock to canned goods, all have to be transported efficiently and quickly. In complete contrast, will be found up-to-date industries that offer new production methods to a country old in tradition. The Blarnian customs of the old world gives way to a modern way of life with its household appliances, neat in design and color, together with many labor-saving devices. This porcelain plant, for instance, was designed by the famous architect, Mr. Michael Scott. From the present, let us look back to an Irish industry well known throughout the world. Glass making, an old established industry which gives beauty, color, line, and harmony. A glass house is a hive of activity. Each craftsman plays his part, for out of toil and dirt is born beauty. Hand and eye work in complete harmony, and the artist's design is flawlessly carried out in the various grinding processes. Rich and deep cut, elegant, a joy to behold. To appeal to other senses is possibly Ireland's greatest export. Known in every part of the globe, rich as the country, and everywhere associated with Dublin's famous River Liffey. So great is the demand overseas that three quarters of a million casks are held in reserve. Bogs are a characteristic feature of the Irish landscape. Ireland has negligible coal deposits. Over one-seventh of its area is bogland. Bordnemona, the National Peat Board, grappled with this problem and through a magnificent organization and mechanization wrested from this useless wasteland of 93% water a fuel suitable for use in the power stations of the National Electrical Network. Peat moss in large quantities is transported and shipped to the countries the world over. In every industry, goods must be transported whether they be the raw materials to the factories or the finished products to the markets at home or overseas. The keynote is transport, a rail system that will efficiently cover all demands of industry and its peoples. Air and road play their part, but the principal solution is a modern railway system. whether it be the transportation of the masses of people in busy centers, or the peak suburban traffic transporting businessmen and women into the cities and back to their homes, or perhaps the convergence of many thousands of sportsmen to sporting fixtures. Ireland, like other countries, is faced with economic problems, some thousands of miles of rail tracks serving a population of some five million people. 
Economies had to be affected, and far-reaching decisions were called for. The CIE, controlling the national transport system, found the solution. A revolutionary decision to scrap at one stroke the old and inefficient steam system, using the ever-scarce and dear coal, and substituting modern diesel-electric locomotion. They passed the largest single order ever placed with any manufacturer in Great Britain by ordering 99 engines made by Crossley Brothers Limited to power their locomotives. Here in England, the CIE officials inspect the first Class A-type locomotive. Out of world competition was chosen the famous Metropolitan Vickers Electrical Company as the main contractors and responsible for the electrical and carriage work. From a choice of the world's best engines, Crossley Brothers V-Type 1,200 horsepower and 550 horsepower engines were chosen. Some 63 of the 1,200 horsepower type engines to power the six axle A class and for the smaller four axle C class locomotives, 36 550 horsepower engines. These two-cycle scavenge pump diesel engines incorporate exhaust pulse pressure charging, an exclusive costly feature giving increased power and efficiency. The clean lines of the engine with their complete absence of valve gear and camshafts are appreciated by any maintenance unit. Also the ease by which pistons and cylinder heads are assembled in place. In this costly test bed, Every engine is tested by electrical load testing equipment, similar to that incorporated in the final locomotive. In these vast direction bays of Crossley Brothers, row after row of these engines are being simultaneously erected, along with engines of similar design for other countries. Elsewhere, in the Metro Vickers workshops, the generators are being assembled axle motor gear wheels fitted and finally being fitted to the rail wheels. A four axle bogey nears completion. At Openshaw, after stringent and exhaustive testing, the engines are inspected and transferred to the locomotive assembly works. This 1,200 brake horsepower V engine at 625 revolutions per minute is used on the A class. Each power unit has a generator bolted under the engine, and the whole unit incorporates a three-point suspension. Two mountings are on the generator and a single one underneath the engine. The engine suspension socket in the body is lined with rubber. And the work of gently lowering the power unit begins. Alongside, the electrical work for the locomotive is in progress. Checking and rechecking until perfection is reached. Each locomotive and its own bogey is transported and shipped separately. From the grimness of industry to the mellowness of the emerald eye. Looking in on Dublin Quay, we see the arrival of a C-class locomotive. First the bogey and placed on the CIE track. Then follows the body complete with power. 
This class of locomotive, with its engine of 550 brake horsepower at 1,000 revolutions per minute, is used for mainline work in addition to shunting duties. Gently, she is swung ashore. Bright and new, and a champion of her class. Last part of the assembly completed, away she goes to start work on a busy rail system, immediately available day or night to transport goods or passengers. Pleasant, clean travel, smooth and seemingly effortless, another locomotive goes into service alongside those of a larger type. With perfect visibility, the driver sits without discomfort or strain, which with the simplest controls eliminate the hazards of driving. Heavy traffic, both passengers and freight, is seen all along the line as we travel down the system. make short work of the mine. Special innovation that the CIE have originated is the radio train, the only one of its kind in the world. The tourists are offered a complete day's entertainment, 400 miles of travel, excellent food, and but let Larry Tracy, the compere, tell you more about it. Radio Horus Ampereira. Well, I am a regular log tastel, Agassar San Horus Ampereira, Faller Oev Han Radio Renaco Kelane. Good morning, everybody, and on behalf of CIE, your host for today, welcome to the radio train to Killarney. This is Larry Tracy here to tell you something about our trip and the country through which we will pass. Incidentally, when I speak of left and right, I'll be referring to the direction in which the train is going, so those of you with your backs to the engine will have to reverse my directions. Dundrum, we run through part of Dundrum Forest, one of our largest state forests. After this, we can see away to the right the foothills of the Shreve Phelan Mountains, which stretch almost to the Shannon River. And so we travel down country at a fair speed, the driver comfortable in his cab with complete visibility of the track. On the train, speed does not interfere with the comfort of the passengers or the excellent service of the CIE stewards.
Yes, Gaelic coffee. Cream rich as an Irish brogue. Coffee strong as a friendly hand. Sugar sweet as the tongue of a rogue. And whiskey smooth as the wit of the land. We are coming into Mallow, the chief town of North Cork, and a very important railway junction. Mallow reminds us of the rakes of Mallow. These were a group of hard men whose excuse for congregating at Mallow was the spa, but whose chief occupations while there were drinking, fighting, hunting, and, well, lots of other things that mothers warned their daughters about. Yes, friends, and here we are at last, coming into Killarney, world famous in song and story. To all of you, whether this is your first visit, or whether, like myself, you've been drawn back again, Killarney extends Cair de Mille Forte, a hundred thousand welcomes. Oh, and by the way, watch out for the leprechaun, and if you see him, keep your eye on him. He may lead you to that crock of gold. A radio train will carry upwards of 800 passengers each trip. A strict timetable and reliability are essential. On arrival at Kalani, another revered mode of transport awaits each passenger. A mode of transport dear to the heart of every Irish national. For what other carriage could dream up the scenes of the famous Crux of Gold or Leprechaun? as we leisurely cloppity-clop around the beautiful lakes and scenic beauties of Killarney. Nothing could be more in keeping with this lovely countryside than to see the Kerry Collines with their shields in the colours of the four provinces. Synonymous with strict timetables and the reduction of running schedules comes that magic word, service. The CIE, by virtue of the three-tier system, ensures a speedy turnaround with the use of a very modern layout and efficiently planned organization. Under the track level comes the electrical inspection, and whilst the work continues, an engineer on another level performs other duties, such as replenishing the lubricating oil and fuel. It should be noted how quickly and efficiently the hose connections are undertaken. One important feature is that the pumps will automatically give only as much as the locomotive requires without any manual control. High pressure greasing is simply and efficiently performed.
After examining the accumulators, the electricians check all the electrical circuits. filters are examined and so with the shortest possible time these locomotives are able to be turned around and are available for immediate service. In the excellently equipped CIE fuel pump and sprayer room the full maintenance service is given to sprayer and pump units. Workmanship and design give intended results. The robustness of the costly designed fuel sprayers and pumps give maximum efficiency under service conditions. Adjoining the servicing department is a modern washing plant. Each locomotive is put through a detergent spray and continues through to be finally washed with high pressure jets of clean water. And so, both A and C class locomotives take their place on the iron track, along lines that improve the country's economy and provide a better standard of living. Locomotives powered by crossley engines that live up to the reputation of their makers. Whether on high-speed, long-distance passenger services, to serving industry, or for the benefit of small communities on local lines. Costly engines have helped the CIE to traverse the difficult years to prosperity.